God would send in your private time. God would warn you on the inside. And he would speak to you in private. He would speak to you over and over and over again. But the same God of the Old Testament has the ability to reveal things to a prophet or a person of God who is just a person who praying and seeking God's face and reveal to that person things that you are doing in secret. I have heard over and over again where people believed that somebody went and they told the person who's preaching something in their private life and they picked up themselves and left the church. Because they are of the opinion that that, that too straight somebody tell them and if they had to come and reveal my business from the pulpit then somebody tell them. And most of the times it's not necessarily somebody told them. Somebody who they think told them. Most of the times it might be most of the times the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords working through the Spirit of God and reveals things. Amen? And I could give examples of these things over and over and over again. When people think that sometimes somebody called me on the phone and said to me certain things about them and I'm standing here preaching what person told me on the phone and I'm using the pulpit to reveal people's business. The prophetic ministry is a very, 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 let me, let me rephrase that. The fivefold ministry is a very, very, very difficult call to stand in. What happens is the fivefold minister who seeks God makes it look easy. Some of us who stand in the office go overboard and makes it look glamorous. But it's a lot of responsibility to stand in the office of the fivefold ministry. A lot of responsibility. Because it's I think they did a survey and they said that one of the most difficult jobs that anybody could ever have a vocation is a pastor. Very difficult. And most of us who are really called never really chose to be a pastor. They were called to be a pastor. And when you're called to be pastoring or called to the fivefold, it's a calling from God. He calls you and you have the option to say yes or no. Amen? So here it is. The prophet is able to see things that are happening in a person's life. Things that you don't want to say, things that you don't want to reveal. But here it is, we see prophet Elisha warning the king of Israel what the king of Syria was saying in private. And look at the kind, it, it says that he is, one of the servants said, none of us. He even thought that he had spies. The prophetic was so accurate that the, the king of Syria thought that he had spies among him. Till one of the servants says, no, my Lord, it's not us. It's the prophet Elisha is telling the king of Israel all that you're saying in the bedchamber. There are many testimonies I've heard from you all 
you know, Bishop, I wanted to go so. And all of a sudden, I didn't feel like I feel I wanted to turn so instead and stop you from impending danger. Amen? We have Jonah. Jonah chapter 3 and verse 4, it says, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. As a result of this word, the people believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and God stayed his hand of judgment. A prophet could prophesy to a nation and prophesy to people, and as that prophetic word comes, it convicts the person, it convinces them, and it changes them. The person decides that I am going to make changes in my personal life. Amen? And the prophetic ministry is still in operation today. Right before our very eyes, we see in the New Testament, it says that Jesus is prophet, priest, and king. In Matthew 13 and verse 57, Jesus says, as he's talking in, cont in context, when they didn't receive him, he says that a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Say that again. A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now I could use this as a rhetorical question, but I'm asking you the question this morning, why? Somebody. You want to take a shot at it, Sharon? Why? Stephen, I knew you were brave enough to talk about it. Why? <laughs> Wait a minute. All right. A prophet, Jesus said that a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. That's Matthew 13 and 57. Anybody? Without honor. Say it again. Taken for granted. Uh huh. Uh huh. They don't know who he is. Okay. Uh huh. They don't know who he comes. Okay. No, but if, no, in context, here, Jesus went to his own. And then, the new, uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me answer the question. Jesus went to his own country, Nazareth, went back to Nazareth. And when he went back to Nazareth, they started questioning, how could this be? Isn't that Joseph's son? Isn't that Mary's boy? Be his sisters and his brothers are here with us. So what is he talking about? Uh, it's like Stephen. Let's say Stephen is in a family. Stephen is in have a family. And everybody knows Stephen coming up. Everybody playing the same pitching with Stephen. They're romping in the same room and all kind of thing. But God starts to deal with Stephen. And as God starts to deal with Stephen, Stephen's whole persona changes. And Stephen, Stephen begins to become more articulate with the word. And he begins to hear from God. <laughs> People could only relate to you, what I realize, based on your past. Most family members have difficulty have a difficult time when again God comes into a person's life and changes you. They could only relate to you based on their past. Let's say Earl starts to talk to his brothers and sisters about God. Why are you trying you're trying by you? Can't remember you to go carnival with people telling me about God, you Jesus, but they seem to never embrace the change.
A man may be running down ladies and a man of the world and God confronts the man and the man changes his life and gets saved. That man gets saved and changes his life. He goes back to the same people to witness to them, to tell them how God has changed them and showed them, gives, gives his testimony. It's difficult for them to receive it because they could only relate to his past. Because Jesus didn't just come preaching, he came demonstrated. It even said that he could not do many works among his own people because they didn't receive him. Now, a church might have somebody who is demonstrative in terms of spiritual things but never really receive the dimension of those demonstrative acts of the Spirit because the church only sees the person as pastor. And never really see the shift when the shift was made in the person's ministry, how the person has grown over the years. In some of them. Because they saw Jesus grow. He grew up. And he came back home. But they couldn't receive him. It's only when he died. They recognized who he was. And this is the problems that we have. Sometimes your blessing is right in your home. Your blessing sleeping next to you. Or you're sitting down next to your blessing, but you never receive it. Your blessing might be a mother and father. Oh, Jesus. Your mother and father. Your blessing might be a sister or brother who God has called to speak into your life, to mentor you for a season. Amen? Amen. When God sets the fivefold ministry in place, it says he gave gifts unto men. And that's what the text says. As Steve, Steve and Stephen. These are calling Steve and Stephen. He gave, right, Philip? He gave gifts unto men. And he gave them Jared apostles. There's one Jared here, there's an next Jared here. He gave apostles, he gave prophets, he gave evangelists, he gave pastors and teachers. These are gifts. That God gave, Christ gave unto men. Amen? So if he gave gifts unto men, how, what is our responsibility towards gifts? Let's say I, I come this morning and begin to give gifts. Tangible things, Lloydie. If your fiancé Presents a gift to you. Christmas time coming, birthday time coming. This week is Sherry's birthday. What do you do with a gift? Show appreciation and do what? You receive. You receive gifts. So most of the problems we are having is we're not receiving the gifts that we and recognizing and appreciating the gift. <laughs> it's like you have a child. And you're giving the child gifts. But the child is taking the gift and training there. But there is one in the family. One, you have more than one child. But there's another child. That every time. No matter how small you give it. Thank you daddy. And cherishes. What do you think you would do? You would continue to give this child because the next one ain't giving you no choice. Because you don't appreciate what you give me. So the five-fold ministry is gifts. I just wanted to talk about the gift of prophecy. We have gifts of the spirit. You receive these gifts. And you appreciate these gifts. And the more you appreciate and receive these gifts, it's better for you. Amen? 
The pastor or leader that God gives you, or have you sitting under, God has put things in that pastor and leader for you. And you have to embrace and receive it. And the thing about it, sometimes the person who God set you to sit under, sometimes they look like dirt. Doesn't look like what you expect or who you expect. But there are things that that person or persons have inside that God put in them. That the only way is for you to look beyond the dirt because I know you have something inside it that God gave you for me. Amen. And I had to learn that by force. Amen. I had to learn that by force. And it's not something that is easy to do. Now we see there were some prophets in the book of Acts. There's a guy by the name of Ag Agabus who prophesied about a famine. He even warned Paul. In Acts 21, he warns Paul by taking, he was demonstrative. He took the belt and he had his belt on. And he told him that his hands would be bound, would be bound the same way. There was also some girls, Philip, Philip had some daughters, you see, see again, the same Philip who prophesied, who went to the eunuch, that same Philip, he went to, some, went to the Philippian, not the Philippian, the Ethiopian eunuch, and he ministered to him and baptized him and he was taken away. He had some daughters, just like Philip had some daughters, have some daughters today, amen? And these daughters that Philip had, they mentioned them in Acts 21, 8 and 9. It said that these daughters prophesied. So God had no problem with women flowing in ministry. Because it's right there. That these daughters were able to prophesy. Amen? So there are female prophets. Yeah, just as there are male prophets. If you don't think that there were female prophets... When you go in the book of what? Judges, where there was a woman by the name of Deborah. She was prophetess Deborah. Deborah was so strong in the prophetic, she was also a judge. That Barak said that Deborah, if you're not going to battle, I ain't going. If you're not going into war, he was not going to fight, Brother Bert. He was not going to fight unless Deborah go with him. And Deborah said, okay, I will go with you. But the victory would not be in your hands. It would be in the hands of a woman. The victory would not be in your hands, but in the hands of a woman. Willing to embrace what God has given to us. Amen. Now, we preached all this. We preach about prophecy. Our intention as a church is to raise up a prophetic team. We have been saying that over and over again. About raising up prophetic, a prophetic team. So that they can flow prophetically. And minister prophetically in, in, in people's lives. Amen. Amen. Now, when we preach these things, we're supposed to see a demonstration of it. True? Supposed to have some sort of demonstration. We're just not supposed to just preach things and leave it open like that because it says that all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. What I've realized is that uh, sometimes we pray for healing for people. They do get healed, but they don't testify of their healing. See things happen in their lives and things change in their lives and that. But they don't come back and testify. So it looks as though sometimes, but they would call me and say, you know, this happened and this happened and I thank God it happened. But they don't come back here and say what happens. And the testimony of the saints, it encourages others to believe in the same God who blessed you. It encourages people. Encourages people to be blessed. I see people doing so. So, 
kind of sensitive when it comes to that. Especially people in front. You'll get it cold when somebody do it in the back. So we need to demonstrate. Amen? We'll do one demonstration. Okay? And then we'll make an altar call for people to come who just need an encouraging word from God. And I call those who uh, I believe have the gift in them to begin to operate and to bring encouragement. Amen? All right. Let's do a demonstration. Let me see. Spirit of the living God, we, I am asking you right now, as a man of faith, as your son, to point me to the right person, to demonstrate your gift of the prophetic in the lives of the person, so that the person may be edified and be encouraged, and that they may be enriched. Thank you, O oh God. For your mercy and kindness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen? It's alright? Let me call my partner, Lloyd. Come, Lloyd. This is my good friend from, from school. Junior said. <laughs> we went junior sec. I haven't seen him for years. We see often one. So I don't know what's happening personally in his life. I just called him this week. And um, he never really. I'm not calling you to say anything. I am, I am the one who's going to do this. Thing. I see what, when he, what we feel are going to give him the mic to say something. But I'm the one who's going to be doing this same. All right? So I'm going to pray with you as a form of demonstration. Father, I thank you for my friend. Uh, Lloyd, Lawrence Lloyd. I thank you for him, even this morning. And I pray, O oh God, that by the power of your spirit, that you will continue to work a work in his life. And I pray that the gifts of the spirit would be manifested right before his very eyes. In Jesus' name. Now, over the last week, there was, was a very tough time for you. In terms of, there was... A lot of incidents that took place that you weren't pleased about. Things on the job, uh, things with one of the drivers and even a supervisor, they began saying some things that have caused a bit of displeasure. And you cooled, according to the Trinidadians, the Trinidad saying you cooled yourself or you cool yourself because you know what it is to get angry, you know what it is to fret, and you know what it is to be responsible. And you have decided to just let things slide because you know for a fact that you're not going to be there very long again. And the Spirit of the Lord says that He has already searched and He has already made a way for you. He says, Lloyd, as you make a step in the right direction, I will restore the things that were stolen from you. Your peace, your joy, your happiness, your finance, and everything that the enemy has wormed his way and stolen from you. And God says, 2017 is a la, is a, is a, mm, 2017 is a new lease in life for you. It's like God is adjusting things and putting things in place. As I, sh I should say, he has already put things in place and he wants you to discover the things that he has already put things in place for both you and your family. And God says, many have hurled insults against you. Many have said that you would never amount to anything good. You will keep going in circles. And that you would always fail. But God says, there is no failure in me. And God says, even as Donnie McClurkin said, that we fall down, but we get back up again. And God says, 2017 is your get back up again time. 
and your get back up again season. So God wants you to walk by faith, Lawrence, and not by sight. And to walk in the peace of God which passes all understanding. He says, I will give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. I would put a new set of joy in your heart. And I would give you the grace to stand in the midst of the storms. So God says, Lawrence, be encouraged and be at peace. For I will give you perfect peace as you keep your mind stayed on me. In Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. supervisor already did. All right. Amen. 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 So, who needs prayer? Come now, and let me call Anastasia. Yeah, she going out. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise, Lord God. We give you honor. We give you glory this morning, Lord. And Father, as we lift up our sister Sherry this morning, O oh Lord God, before you, Lord God, we thank you for her life, O oh Lord God. Father, Lord God, we thank you, O oh Lord God, that she's celebrating another year of life, O oh Lord God. Father, you have seen all her pains and all her hurts, Lord God. Father, you know everything that she's been through, O oh Lord God, and you know how much she's celebrating to be able to be alive today, O oh Lord God. And so, Father, Lord God, we thank you, O oh Lord God, that as you remove all those obstacles, O oh Lord God, that has been hindering her from moving forward, O oh Lord God. Father, Lord God, from moving forward to being a blessing, O oh Lord God. Because, Father, you know she likes to be a blessing, O oh Lord God. And, Father, Lord God, we thank you, O oh Lord God, for removing every obstacle that is hindering her from being a blessing, the blessing that she wants to be right now, O oh Lord God. And we thank you for the turnaround in her life, even right now, O oh Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the testimonies that are going to come forth, O oh Lord God, as you use her for your honor and your glory, Lord God. And we give you praise right now. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 That's called prophetic praying. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Sandra, go ahead. Praise the Lord. John, praise God. Father, I lift John before you, O God. I pray, O God, as he make the right decision to walk with you, O God, the doors would be open, O God, in a way that he never experienced. I hear the word of the Lord saying to you, John, you're, you, you, you're struggling you, you want to walk with your family in a certain way. But things seem to be blocking you. You want to follow the Lord in spirit and in truth. But I say to you, John, make that step. And God will make a way where there seems to be no way. It seems as though your job is hindering you. But when you want to fellowship, when you want to worship, have to go to work but you can you have to make the time you have to make that decision that I and my household will serve the Lord in spirit and in truth so be encouraged John rise up as a man of valor and declare as Joshua as for me and my house we will so the Lord Father, I pray, O oh God, that you would bless this young man as he rise, O oh God, and be, be the man that you have called him to be. An example to his children, O oh God. We ask this in no other name. Jesus Almighty. God bless you, John. Hallelujah. Father, I give you praise. I give you We thank you for joining us today for our broadcast. We pray that it was a blessing to you. We invite you to our next broadcast and we pray that your week will be one of blessings in Jesus' name. Amen.